Five interesting facts from the ATPL subject, general navigation. Let's go! Fact number one. The source of the mile. In aviation, distances are mainly measured in nautical miles, but it can of course be necessary to convert them into a different unit. For example, one nautical mile is exactly 1.852 kilometers. But why? Well, nowadays it's just an exact definition that was first introduced in 1929. But historically speaking, it was defined as one minute of latitude along any line of longitude. And you can even calculate this yourself. If you take the circumference of the Earth, which around the poles is around 40,007 decimal something kilometers, and you divide that by 360 degrees to get the distance in one degree, and if you divide that again by 60, you will get the result for one minute of arc, which is rounded 1.852 kilometers. Fact number two time zones and where they come from. Now, I'm sure everyone is familiar with time zones, but in GNAV we didn't only learn about the standard times, which are basically just set by the local government, but also about the local times. These can be quite close to each other, but for example, in the case of China, if you have one huge standard time zone, then they can differ by quite a few hours as well. The local times change by one hour every 15 degrees of longitude you move away from the Greenwich Meridian. So it's fairly easy to calculate the local time if you have the coordinates of a place. And noon of a local time is always the time when the sun is at its highest in the sky. Fact number three. True north, magnetic north and compass north. Everyone knows True North because it's literally just the geographical North Pole. But unfortunately, compasses don't care about geography. They only care about the magnetic poles. And they're not at the same position and also tend to move around. So in charts, you also have the magnetic variation given for a certain point. That's why the charts won't be valid forever either, because the magnetic variation changes over time. But if you have a true track and you know the local variation, you can calculate the magnetic track. But that's not the only issue. You see, a compass doesn't only get influenced by the Earth's magnetic fields, but also by local ones. Certain substances or electric fields can also influence the compass and that leads to compass deviation. The deviation is specific to the aircraft and the compass and also depends a bit on the current aircraft heading that has to do with how um, the interference interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. It uh, sounds a bit complicated but in practice it's not that bad because every aircraft close to the compass just has either a sticker or a placard that tells you which compass course to fly for a given magnetic course. So to recap, true north corrected for the local variation gives you magnetic north, which again corrected for the compass deviation gives you compass north, which is what you can actually read on your compass. Fact number four, the sun is closest to earth in winter. You'd think that the sun is closest to Earth in summer, right? But that's not actually true. The Earth's orbit currently reaches perihelion, so the point at which it is closest to the sun, at around beginning of January, so when it is winter in the northern hemisphere. The seasons are much rather due to the 23.5 degree tilt of the Earth's axis that changes the amount of sunlight and the angle of sunlight that hits the Earth. But does that mean that it's actually warmer in the southern hemisphere in summer than it is in the northern hemisphere in summer? No, that's actually also wrong. 
Whilst it is true that the amount of solar radiation that hits the southern hemisphere is a bit more, the average temperature is actually a bit lower. And the reason for this is that there's more land mass in the northern hemisphere that can get heated up easier and faster by the sun. Fact number five. Great circle tracks are the shortest distance between two points on a sphere. A big part of GNAV is also working with maps and different projections. Now the Earth is a sphere and maps are usually flat, so there's always some limitations in the projection. For example, the Great Circle Track, which is the shortest distance between two points on Earth, is on most projections not actually a straight line. That's why if you look on flight tracking sites and you look at a long haul flight, it seems like they're taking a really, really big T-tour, but in fact, they're actually most of the time quite closely following the Great Circle Track. It's just the projection of the map displays this Great Circle Track not as a straight line, and it looks like it's way longer than it needs to be. And that's it for this video. I actually almost forgot to shoot an outro. So that was five facts from general navigation. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something. If you did, consider subscribing and leave a like. It really means a lot to me. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.